Good morning everybody, the Bora is here and yes, the Bora is still here. I know it's been a couple of weeks since our last Road to 10k video. Yes, I am still very much doing this. I just, <laughs> for such, okay, I'm going to have a little bit of a rant. For such a car, which is still universally known as a cheap shitbox, right? Trying to find parts for it. I mean, this one's a cheap shit box because it's a it's the cool engine. But this engine shares so many parts of everything. I could not find these two parts that I need. I needed a power steering line, which took me ages to find. And for some reason, people who were breaking the borers and stuff and the golfs and everything. If you're breaking a car on Facebook, okay, and someone messages you and says, "Hello, I know you want to make money off your parts. Can I buy your parts for money?" Why does no one respond? Nobody responds. Or people do respond, and then it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, pick it up Tuesday. Tuesday comes, hey mate, I want to buy your parts which you're trying to sell for money. Can I give you some money? No response. So for, anyway, weeks later, I finally found a damn wing. I had to drive all the way to Milton Keynes, like three hours just to get a bloody wing. I made a little weekend of it, so it doesn't really matter, but still, it's annoying. And I finally have got the power steering line. So today, realistically, it should be running and driving. I took a policy out with green light, so if you're saying to green light insurance, they're happy to do me a uh, a policy for the Road 10K series. Yes, so that means we're going to insure all the cars. Great, yes. So today we're going to fix some more. So I've got a wing inside. We need to change the wing because the front wing's horrific, and we need to put a new power steering line on, bleed the power steering, and. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually dreading to do the power steering line <laughs> because it's like such an awkward. It goes under and over and over the box and all that, and. There's power steering fluid all over the place. I don't want to get my hands dirty. Um, well, so I'm going to start with the clean stuff. So we're going to change the wing. This wing is like really, really, really bad. It's rotten all the way around. Uh, and for some reason, someone's been, I think someone started sanding it and gave up. So trying to find a wing was A, impossible. It literally took me like three weeks to find one. And B, trying to find one without any rust in it was really tough. So I've got one back here, which has got a tiny little bit of rust on it, but it's 10 times better. So here's the wings, there's a little bit here, a little bit here, but overall it's in much better condition. Um, I was going to get some paint and just like touch up some areas. Uh, so I can literally just sand back the little bit of surface rust that's on this. And I was just going to spray it with some reflex silver. You can actually get that from Halfords. It's only a few quid. So see there. So I'm just going to put it on the car because I can do that on the car. So a little bit of rust, but it's 10 times better that it actually looks the same colour as the car and not just like flat. So we're going to take this wing off and we're going to change this wing. So I'm just taking the final two bolts off here. You've got to take the... Um, wheel arch out and there's two underneath normally you just open the door and you can just get them through the door normally on that side but this one you've got to take the wheel arch off which luckily for me all the torx bolts actually came loose okay so here's the old wing <laughs> look at this <laughs> that is someone's attempt of a repair wow so they've just found the old bit that's kind of like flaked off right so it would have been like this at one point and then they've just like fiberglass cheated that bit on. Wow. Okay, so there's the new wing on, miles better. We managed to fix a bit of the bumper sag um, as well on the side. So looks a lot cleaner. The panel gaps are all good as well. What we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna polish up the headlights as well, because that makes such a massive difference to a car. So we're gonna polish up the headlights. I have got some cutting compound in here. Um, I've not got a polisher for my drill attachment. Um, but I should be able to get it off by hand with some with some compound. Flat wings looks 10 times better. But next thing, let's put the new power steering line on. Let's go and get the power steering line we've got inside and make sure it's actually the right one. We also need to finish off putting the airbox and stuff on. The airbox and the battery trays are not on there in there, so we need to put them on as well. But let's get this power steering line back on. So I'm not exactly happy. Um, the line I've bought, I've not unboxed it because I just trusted it would be fine. Um, it's, it's cut in half. So the banjo is being cut off the end. So that's what it shouldn't look like. And this is the old one, that's what it should look like. So someone has just cut the banjo off the end and then sent me it, but it's a high pressure line. So <laughs> there's not much I can do with that. Um, so it looks like the ball is not going to be driving today. Uh, right, well, let's drop the guy. I bought that off a message and let's see what he says. In the meantime, let's just get a little cut, little bit of cutting compound and let's literally just go over these lights by hand and let's see how good we can get them. Stab a bit on there and literally just work it in by hand. And look at the difference between that 
and that let's literally by hand tiny bit of cutting compound look at the bloody difference so let's do this side real quick and boom look at the front of the car now it's like five times but wait what five years newer so i can't really do the power steering line i'm going to wait for that i can't really put the battery back on because it's going to be easier to tighten down the uh, power steering line while i'm here like this so i can't really put the battery back on and all that so what we're going to do is i think we're going to run to halfords and we're going to get some of the paint um we're going to get some reflex silver um because there's little bits here that i'll just like to tidy up and cover up a little bit it's a little bit of rust there same on this side a little bit on our new wing a little bit of the sills just like just cover up a little bit make it a little bit nicer same little bit here actually there's one more thing we can do before we go to halfords remember inside the car there's a constant warning uh saying brake pad the brake pad's fine but what's happened is the wires on the wear sensor have just come off and obviously it's an open circuit uh now i've had a look and you can actually get pads with these without the wear sensors i'm actually surprised this, this even has wear sensors considering the age um, so what we're going to do is to fix that, uh, we're just going to put the wires together. So you can see there's tons of brake pad left and this is why it's sending a uh, code to the ground. It actually looks like someone's tied them together in the past, um, so they've not worked for a while. Um, but obviously the ground's just come off. So it's an open circuit and it thinks uh, that the uh, brake pads are low because what happens is you'll have this ground or you'll have a wire into the brake pad and when the brake disc goes so low or the pad goes so low it cuts through that wire and then it creates an open circuit like this is doing so it thinks the brake pads are low so what we're going to do is we're going to cut these two wires down splice them together and tape them up right the wires are spliced together tape it up put it back in the hole and there we go so for some reason that didn't work i'm still getting a brake pad sensor so i'm guessing one at the back is broke i've just turned on and I forgot that I've got an airbag light. So let's give it a Google. Um, and they say, oh, pull out the connector from under the seat. Oh yeah, good one. Fuck me. It's literally like, you can't get this plastic off, right? It's, it, it's there. You can't, you can barely get your hand on it. I've only just got my hand on it. Of course it's VW, so they've got a shitty clip which doesn't make fucking sense in any universe how it clips on and off. It was clipped on this white thing. I know you can't see anything right now. Neither can I, guys, trust me. World's shittest fucking clip ever. Like, just put it in an easy position. Oh, I hate VW so much. Anyway, someone online saying, if you unplug that a bunch of times, put it back in, put it back in, take it off, put it back in. Apparently, the pin's oxidized and it thinks the airbag's been set off. So he was saying, if you do that a few times, clears the oxidation it makes a better connection again so i've took it off once god knows i'm going to put it on on and off again a few times it's an absolute nightmare to get hold of oh no airbag light's still on <sighs> hate vws oh and my current temperature sensor we fixed in the first video that's still showing an engine management light they'll tell you that i fucking hate vws okay so to dive deeper that was just easy thing to dive deeper into the airbag uh, issue i'm gonna have to get a proper scanner on it they can scan the airbag and tell me where it's coming from. And I've heard that there's quite a few uh, issues with the connectors in these cars. Shock, it's a VW. Um, so apparently a lot of people have to hardwire the wire into the airbag from the seats or to the modules down here or whatever. Um, so until I start doing that, I'm going to get a proper scanner because even with a proper scanner, I'm going to have to remove the code to see if it's worked with a scanner. I'm going to have to clear the airbag. Uh, so I'm going to have to borrow a scanner from KWJ before I do that. Um, so I can't go any further with the airbag, can't go any further with the power steering because someone sent me a broken part for a VW. <laughs> I'm joking, I don't hate VWs that much. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Halfords and I'm going to get some paint because there's really not much else we can do from here. Uh, I'm going to have to go and get some paint. Shut up, it's the most annoying noise ever. Did I mention that? I hate VWs. Like silver from, um, from Halfords. Uh, and we've come back and we're just going to sand back the bits that are a little bit surface rusty. So I've just done the end of the sill here and the end of there. Um, I don't want to spend it all day in it like we did with the Mustang. So I flattened all the surface rust off so you pretty much can't see any rust anymore. So we're going to just quickly mask it. Now we're not going to mask it as you would think. We're going to blend it. We don't just want to have a line of silver there. So we're going to try and blend it in. So I'm going to show you how I would do that. So we're going to get a piece of paper but we kind of want to fold it back on itself so it's not going to create such a harsh edge so we're going to stick that bit down there like this and then we're going to fold it over like that and it's not going to create such a harsh edge it's just going to go in then so that's what the plan is move it up a little bit 
There we go, just like that. You feel me, guys? It's just going to just sit under the crease. It's not quite such a harsh line that we're going to see. So just mask that off. I've cleaned it. Let's just blast it with some paint. So as that bit dries there, I'm just standing this back nice and smooth. Then we're going to do the same here. This is quite a small area, so I'm just going to do the loop with the tape and then just put um, paper around so we don't go overspray. But this one's coming actually nice, really nice and smooth, actually. This one's going to come out quite nice. Right, so I can't really do anything else on the borer now. The new wing is on. It looks 10 times better. The headlights are done. It looks 10 times better of a car. I can't put all the engine stuff back together because I need to basically you dip this getting the power steering line in there so i can't do that so i'm gonna get this car moved so i need to i need the mustang to come in here and i need to take the we're welding the deer, the rear deer so i need to get the whole axle oh so i'm gonna move this car it will drive without the power steering and i've insured it and everything so it will actually drive but obviously it's not very good um it's still pissing out power steering fluid from down here but i've put some tape around the banjo hole hopefully that will stop it pissing out more fluid all over the floor um yeah i'm going to get onto the guy about the power steering line not very happy about that but <sighs> one thing i need to do as well is that for some reason this new coolant temperature sensor is still sending a code it's still sending a code to the ECU saying it's the voltage is too high so if the sensor's shit Somebody did say to me on the, on the page that when you get them cheap ones off eBay, they don't work. But it's annoying. It's weird because there's so many of them and they've sold like 900 and they've got good feedback. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's just a case of just fully chucking the code off. But when we get to Kieran's scanner, we'll do that. So for now, I'm going to have to, well, either, well, see you in the next episode. I'm going to get my shit together again. Sorry about this um, taking longer. It's just what happens when you're doing secondhand cars. So, I'll see you in the next episode, guys, and hopefully, praying this will be running and we can get rid of it and get the next car. So, I love you all. See you in the next one.